There we go. Awesome, awesome. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. My name is Rebecca Johnston. Um, I wanted to start off by saying the topic that we have today, I feel um, is really, really beneficial when it comes to this business and growing your market. And the person that I chose today to join me, I don't believe could be any better when it comes to this. Um, I'm super excited to hear what she has to say. She said she's got a plan that she lays out. Um, I know that I have worked groups personally myself a lot as well. Um, and I have a way of doing things in way of doing things as well. I, I'm excited. So I want to start off with, of course, our gratitude is if you can either write in the comments or write in your own book, three things that you are grateful for today. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful week so far. I know that some of us have our chill that was sent out. I hope you guys are super excited as much as I am <laughs> to try that stuff. Brittany's over here sad. Was everybody ship? Because mine wasn't. Oh, I bet they're doing it as like a rollout, aren't they? Mm. They're gonna pick and choose. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany did not get voted on the island. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I know that's one thing I'm grateful for, for sure, <laughs> is that getting shipped out. And then I want to say thing that you're grateful for today. Um, I want to throw in, I want you to think about one thing that you're going to do different today that you didn't do yesterday for your business. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and jump right into this thing. So three things that you're grateful for today. Um, I usually do like within the last 24 hours. Um, so I really get specific about what I'm grateful for. And then one thing you're gonna do for your business today that you did not do yesterday. Good morning, everybody. Okay, I'm going to jump right into this. I don't want to give too much time on this, but um, our topic today is exploring your cold market with groups while keeping them engaged. Um, like I said before, I'm super stoked about this because a lot of us use groups, um, but a lot of us are kind of confused at how to go about using these groups and how to keep them engaged and how to bring them into our Thrive business? Like, how do we go about talking to them about it? How do we get them into our network? How do we get them to be relatable? Um, so some of the, these are some of the things that we're going to go over, some of the things that um, we're going to touch on. And then also, uh, I have my wonderful friend, Tony here that has a way of doing her things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to start off by saying, uh, one of the things that I feel that groups surround yourself by is those five things. If you don't have five things that make you, you, um, please make sure that you sit down today. Um, we're at the end of the month. Why not start the month off, right? And have your five things that make you, you. So what I mean by this, you guys, is you're not just a thriver. You're not just a network marketer. You're something other than that. You're a mom. You're you know, a pottery fan like me, Ray Dunn fan, you, you know, you're remodeling a home for me, you know, I like Nightmare Before Christmas, I like Cactus and Succulents. So some of these are some of the things that you're going to see on my personal page. Um, so what I personally do is I take a look at these five things and I think about who can I relate to when it comes to this product. So in other words, if I am looking at my list, I have Ray Dunn, Mom, Remodeling, Nightmare Before Christmas, Cactus and Suck. So if I look at my list, I personally feel like my best benefit here is going to be the mom groups because we all personally know they're tired, they're exhausted, um, they, they're moody. Um, it's summertime. We got kids home right now. So that's something that I personally feel is going to be more relatable when it comes to these groups. So I'm going to go and find a mom group. Now, what I personally feel would be more beneficial, you guys, is yes, there's 
tons of mom groups, but go more specific than that. Try to go like Conroe area mom groups. So like, that's my personal town. Um, you want to be face to face anyway, and you want to meet and greet with these people, why not be more specific when it comes to these groups? Now, the big groups are awesome as well to really get into building your network and really getting engagement on these posts. Um, but also just finding a group that's going to be relatable for you is going to be what is gonna be beneficial. Um, now, choose one, find a group, but stay simple. Um, the easiest thing here is staying simple when it comes to your post. Um, for me personally, it's writing out a post like, okay, it's summertime and it's raining here in Texas. What are your rainy day summer activities? Boom. And then I'm going to get a bunch of moms that are going to be relatable to that. And they're going to, you know, go into detail about what they're doing, but also being engageable when it comes to these posts, you guys make sure that you're engaging back. Um, also that you are engaging with them as well. Now, when it comes to adding people from your post or adding people from these groups, I personally recommend that you 100% use your post that you personally just posted and engage with that and go into these profiles. Um, one of the things that I personally look for when I'm going into these groups and I'm looking at um, <clears throat> what this potential has, I'm going through what their posts are, what their engagement is, how many friends do they have? Um, are they going to be somebody that I personally know that could benefit from this, either from the business or either from just the product in general? And then I'm going to add them, but I'm also going to put them on a list. So I personally have like a tens list or a twenties list of people that I personally interact with every single morning. So I'll get up and I'll interact with groups. Um, my minimum is 10. And I try to stay into the same groups, so you guys. Like I said, I want to be in the most relatable groups that's going to help me bring in people that actually personally need this. So um, also one of the things while you're adding these people, Facebook has a awesome, awesome tool that will help you kind of keep track of these people. If you're not going to keep a list, if you're not a list person, I get it. But Facebook has your back as well. So one of the things that they personally have on their app is when you go into your friends tab, you click the friends, then you click all friends, and then there's a sort button to the right, you guys. Click that button and it's going to have newest friends first. That's going to get you all the friends that you personally just added from these groups in a list so that you personally can interact with them. You can, you know, go through their profiles, interact, build that relationship, and also get them into Messenger. So um, the last thing that I'm going to talk about as far as interacting in these groups and getting them into Messenger is how are you going to reach out once you're adding these people from Messenger? One of the things that I personally do is I already went through their profile, so I'm going to figure out what are things that are relatable that I personally can relate to that I can reach out to them by. So whether it's a t-shirt, whether it's a um, something they personally did over the weekend, I'm going to either reach out in a message and say, hey, oh my gosh, I saw that you went to the splash pad over the weekend. I know that we have one here in Texas. It was so, so hot. And when we went, my, my kids had a freaking blast. What do you guys have at y'all splash pad? So I just kind of create that conversation that's mom mic or whether or whatever group it is, I'm going to be relatable to that and bring in the conversation. <clears throat> So that's personally what I do when it comes to building with these groups. Um, you guys, these groups are huge for when building your network. And it also makes it easier to kind of connect with people and not have that question of, hey, do I know you? Because you're already conversating with them in a group and you're already building that relationship through the post that you're making. And that's going to help you keep away from that. One last thing that I forgot to mention is another thing that you personally can do when you're in these groups, you're already posting in them, but also one of the things that you can do is 
use that search bar, use that search bar to your advantage, type in tire, type in what you're posting about for the day. So like, say you're making a post about your kids going to the splash pad or you're going to the pool, type that in the search bar and then see who posted about that before and interact with their posts or maybe post a picture of what, you know, you, your kids in the pool on their posts. So that kind of pulls their post back up to the top and you can interact with those people in that post and add from there as well. Um, <clears throat> yes, so when you get in their inbox, you wanna be relatable. You wanna just be friendly and upfront. Um, one of the things I 100% do not recommend, do not bring up Thrive until you've already built that relationship. Um, like I said, from these groups, you're not going to get that do I know you message. So you're already going to be, in a sense, figure out, figuring out what kind of person they are and how you're going to be relatable to them when it comes to this experience. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm super excited to hear what Miss Tony has to say. Um, this woman right here, She's an inspiration, she's always been an inspiration to me. Um, super stoked to hear how she works these groups and how she goes about doing it. Um, so I'm gonna bring her in here. Miss Tony, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, ladies. Good morning. And gents, I think. Hello, awesome. hello. All right, can awesome. you guys hear me? Yes, me. Um... All right. Um, are you ready for me? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take that as yeah. All right, hi, I'm Tony Tomzak. Um, I've been promoting this amazing company for over two and a half years now. Um, I really enjoy doing this. Um, I, I'm full-time graphic designer, which is what you see me doing when I'm not looking at the screen. I'm actually doing graphic design work. And um, I own a boutique. So this is something that I literally do outside of my employment. Um, I've learned to fit this into the nooks and crannies of my day. Um, and that was honestly the best advice I was given when I first came in is not to feel overwhelmed by accomplishing so much. Um, figure out what initially what I thought was beer, what your IPAs are. <laughs> um, I didn't really realize um, the power of that statement until <laughs> I didn't really realize that power of that statement until I figured out how time efficient you could be with um, what you were doing if you would just like barrel down and figure out what works best for you. Um, so I've taken a bunch of push groups. <laughs> I've taken a bunch of, of like push group incentive things, you know, throughout obviously doing this, um, qualified for retreats and stuff like that to, you know, to just to take in different ways that people teach things and what they do that works for them. Um, so for a long time, which in my case was about a year and a half, um, I did not um, exert my what do they call that? My warm market, meaning the people that I actually like, I think that's what they call it, that I actually know. Um, and that people that I've been connected with, I went to two high schools, um, it's pretty much split right down the middle of two. And I knew a lot of people, um, been self-employed for a long time with my own business. So I had a nice warm market, um, of people that watch me, you know, like I roughly, went to school with a thousand kids between the two high schools. So, you know, I had some people and I have a good relationship with them, but I always struggle um, initially what to post about. And like, I can get redundant and I can get kind of lost on what I'm posting if I don't kind of like figure out what I want to post about. So I kind of struggle with that. And, you know, honestly, like your timeline speaks so much volume. That's what people are looking at when you're friending them. So you really have to figure this out before you go joining a bunch of groups. Um, and I don't say a bunch of groups. So what I suggest, and this is what I learn and the things that have worked best for me, and these are just the tips I'm going to give you, take them with a grain of salt, is I would go to your profile and I would look at the little description below your picture 
you know, like the bio or whatever they call it. And I would learn to streamline that. Like, what exactly are your things? I don't want to hear, don't take this the wrong way, like boy mom. Well, I'm a boy mom too, but I I have been for seven years and that clearly wasn't working for me. Um, But like things that like you're really into. So for me, like UTV off-roading, I have an Australian shepherd. Now, granted, I'm not really into them, but he's my, one of my world. You guys see me posting about him. That's part of what I, you'll, you'll see how this comes full circle, but I basically like, I'll give you three things, German shepherd, (laughs) Australian shepherd and off-roading. I'm going to use those three as my example, because those were the three that I, not the Australian shepherd, but the other two that I pinned in on and worked on initially. So what I did was I sat down one day and it literally took me all day (laughs) to figure out what my things were, what makes Tony Toms act like, what makes me, I'm going to use the word lightly, interesting. What would maybe people not realize I'm that into, or what does it seem people are like, I kind of went off of like, well, everybody seems to really like when I post the dog pictures. I'm like, all right, well, I clearly am a dog person. So that's going to be one of my focuses. And, you know, I, I, I changed my, so when people come to my profile, they saw what I'm into right away. So I went through and I deleted like the boy mom and this and that. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, UTV, uh, German shepherd, Aussie, go to my profile. If you want, you'll see like, uh, working out, uh, vacationing bikinis and boards, meaning snowboards and <laughs> from mountains to whatever. So these are my things. Um, so what did I do with those things? Okay. So I put it up and honestly left it for about 24 hours. I kind of wanted to just set. So like, you know, like, okay, these are my things like let that get in your head. These are the things you're going to focus about when you don't know what to post about. That's kind of how I felt. So of course, like I fit one business post in about thrive. I try every day, but I can't say that every day gets a business post. Um, because I'm marketing to customers too. I'm not specifically looking to grow my team that really never worked as well for me as bringing on the right customers who turned into my best promoters. Some of you guys are on this call, but like you get that, like I never really felt the need to initially, you know, and and then I got to grow relationship with people. And most of my promoters are friends and I started running out of people. So um, what I did was I basically took one group so I didn't feel overwhelmed. And and this is all honesty, like do work at your speed. You want to join all four groups that are shown in your profile initially, go ahead, but you're going to be responding and, you know, basically taking care of four posts. And I'll tell you what I do. But so basically what I did was I joined a side-by-side off-roading group. That was the first one. And it's specific to Wisconsin because that's where we're headed up today and we'll be gone for a week. That's our cabin. That's where our UTV is. And I joined this UTV group and, um, you know, got accepted and really went head in with the idea of an entry post that engages and gets people to communicate with you um, and all that jazz. Like, I was like, well, I need to really come up with something. So now it took me a couple days to get my first post out because I needed a really good first picture. And I know that sounds crazy, but I really, really love to take pictures. Um, And I wanted to be able to put something up where it just caught everybody's attention. So me, Jeff and Ryder, my son and my husband, we were on the trail, just giving a little bit of over over giving, over sharing (laughs) around a trail. And my husband picked my son up and kind of threw him over his shoulder. Just, they had helmets on and they were, we were walking around outside the UTV and he threw him over his shoulder and I took a picture and it ended up being one of my favorite pictures ever. And they both have helmets on and it was so cute and they're both smiling. And, um, you know, and then I took another picture with me in it and like a beautiful background and whatever. So I, the, I was like, these two pictures are money. These are my favorite pictures. Like these speak so much volume to me. This was so much fun. So those were going to be my pictures. So I went into the group and I created an engaging first time post. Um, and basically said like, hi, we're the Tom Zacks. Fully introduced myself like a dork. Hey, we're the Tom Zacks, you know, and I gave them a little bit more information, you know, like we're, we're from Illinois, but we come up here and these trails and we've been coming up for 15 years and give us a warm welcome. Any type of advice you guys have on trail riding and what trails and I mean, an engaging post. So just think of something that everybody can put their two 
Sunsun, because that's what they're waiting for. You guys, I mean, come on, who doesn't want to chime in on stuff? Like I chime in on posts. Like I sit there sometimes and think about God, where was my first date or whatever? Sometimes I can't remember, but you know what I mean? Like an engaging post. So I went to, I was like, okay, we got this. Like I, I put the post up and I was very nervous. I just was, I was like, oh gosh, I'm just asking for it. Like, this isn't going to work. Like I'm planning on it. You know, I was just nervous. So anything new makes me nervous, but that's how you change and you evolve and you know, so on and so forth. So put the post up and like within fairly 90 minutes, there was like 400 comments on it. Now this is a decent sized group. I don't choose groups that are 60, 70, 90,000. That's not, to me, that's overkill. And that's usually a lot of, you know, you're just fighting bullets everywhere of just nonsense. And this was a group I usually stick between, you know, two and 4,000, you know, sadly, like I try to group, take a group that's a little bit more under control. And I got like, I think it was like 700 likes and 200 comments or 300 comments or something the very first day. So I let those comments roll in. I'm not going to go back instantly and, and start liking them. That means I have nothing better to do with my time. And that's just my personal opinion. But like, I don't go back right away. Even if I put a post up about minis, I don't go back right away and comment, like give it a little time. Like you're doing something like, create that, that like they're excited, you know, whatever. So anyways, I like captivated them, engaged them, and they were all giving me their two cents on the post. So I let it do its thing all day. And the beauty of these rolling posts is that you don't have to ha tackle all that in one day, but this is why if you're doing that in three groups, the eventually think it's going to be overwhelming. Like for me, it would be because like, that's a lot of responding, you know what I'm saying? So start in one place. So I put this post up these people went commenting. I turned off, believe this or not, I turned off notifications all day. I turned them off. I didn't want to be distracted by it. Yes. Yes. There's a lot happening there. Yes. I need to give it attention, but I'm not going to let it suck my entire day up because I do the other income producing activities that I do come back to it. Keep posting in your stories, keep doing as you do. So went back to it and one by one, believe that or not. And this post went on for about six weeks. And if it's a really good one, you don't need to create a new one just because it's two, three, four weeks old. People are still commenting on it, which is what happened with mine. It's going to get bumped and they're going to, and you're just going to go back and respond as they comment. So like what I did was I was like, okay, now little did I know, I think somewhere between 150 and hundred comments in a private group, um, even on your own post will get you I don't want to use the word lightly blocked, but it says like, you have to stop commenting for now. Like it's one of those standards they created for groups. So <laughs> I usually do it until meh, I try not to hit that threshold because then I can't comment. So I usually try to stick around like responding to 30 to 50 people. Okay. And then I leave the rest for the next day, believe that or not. So I'll comment back and I'll be like, Hey, what's going on? You know, thank you for your comment. Oh, I appreciate that. Or whatever it might be. And I, if they seem to have good communication, so they love your post, they've got good Facebook etiquette is what I like to say. They love your post. They're liking other people's comments. They're following it with you. You know, the type of people, especially in groups. So like those people, those people have good Facebook etiquette. Those people are the people I want in my network because they're really good about responding on Facebook. And as much as that seems silly, I have, we all have enough people who never like a dang thing. And then they show up and they want to, you know, in a sense that I could have been one of them, be a promoter or something. And then they, they go back to really not liking anything, not communicating. Like I like the good etiquette I know that I don't have to say like, well, you know, you need to have, you need to talk to people on Facebook if you're going to work Facebook. So basically I go through and I figure out who's got good etiquette. I do respond to all of them, but the people who are like going back and really liking my comments, really liking my comment, like putting a heart on taking the time to, to, to go back and not just hit like to that extra second to swipe up to that, to that, um, to that heart actually speaks really big volume to me because when I take the extra 10th of a second to do that, to me, it's meaningful. Like just hitting like is very simple and it really doesn't give much feeling involved to it. Like, yeah, they're just liking it because I'm talking to them, but they're being courteous. Well, so basically the ones that, you know, are communicating and I continue those conversations with the ones that might get a little off topic, 
ultimately. Like I might start off by talking about UTV and then we might talk about where the lake house is and what lake we're on. And then we might have eight or 10 comments going. And this conversation might go on for a day or two. I'm not expecting them to respond right away. I'm not in their messenger and I never get in any of their messenger right away. I don't want anybody flagging me in the group as doing anything inappropriate. So I'm just getting etiquette going here. And once I see who's got really good conversation, guess what I do? Big surprise. I send them a friend request. So now, of course, they're going to go to my profile. Okay, so this is where you got to remember and take, I don't want to use the word take notes. It's not that hard to remember, but make sure you have something of value on your profile that they can see when you friend request them. That's going to keep them wanting to continue to be your friend. Okay, so save one of those good pictures for your newsfeed. So like I had another one or something. Yeah, I did. It was a family one. We were in our helmets, something like that. And I put it is my, my post right before I decided to create this engagement post. Um, like I said, it went on for days. So that wasn't one of the newest posts, but I make sure my first, like, this is one of the things I'm going to be posting about. Let's get this down. I put it in my newsfeed. So when I decide to hit fan them and they go to my profile and they see in my like description, UTVs, these guys really do. She's not just sending me some random friend request. They feel more comfortable, let me tell you. Then they scroll through my, you know, my news feed and they see she posts about this. Okay, this is somebody I could be friends with because I'm really into this and she clearly is too. Yeah, I can follow her. Like this isn't spammy Tammy trying to hit me up with some product. And again, I'm just being transparent. That's how I think, but that's, <laughs> it's probably not the best way to think, but you know, I mean, when we join these groups and random people start friending us, you know, you start to wonder what, what exactly are you friending me for? We don't know each other. And as bad as, cause I'm really bad with sending random friend requests. I don't do that. I've never done that. And no offense to any of you guys. I am so happy for you, but I have a really hard time keeping engagement and connecting with these people where I don't know what we have in common. What do we have in common? I just sent you friend requests. Um, so like barreling down and finding people that actually have hobbies, kind of like my marriage <laughs> in common with me is how I keep them around, like my marriage. <laughs> so point being is that I have these group of people that I'm going through and I'm selecting people that are super fun, that have great pictures. Like they're going back and they're going, oh, here's my family. Look how cute. Oh my gosh, how cute are you and your kids? Ah, we should connect on the trail sometime. Knowing that we're all on the same trail because this is the Wisconsin trail thing. Hello, now we have so much, like I have an opportunity to really meet these people. Okay, so I make sure that when I'm going back to my profile pictures or my profile every couple of days, I am making sure that that is something I post about. That UTV is what I like, off-road utility, whatever it's called. That is part of what makes me me. And that's going to be part of my content from here forth. So one, one hit wonder isn't, isn't going to work. That's going to be every couple of, oh, you're so welcome, sir. Um, every couple of, you know, in my opinion, every two days, I'm going to put something up about UTV. So I run out of pictures. Of course I do. My UTV is 250 miles away from me right now. We're actually leaving in a little bit. So when I go up there this weekend, I'm going to make sure I take like a little photo shoot with my UTV. I know you guys are laughing, but like, like by the sunset, by the lake, whatever. And I'm going to save, let's just say 12 really good pictures on my camera roll of my family. And I'm not going to go home and rapid fire with them in an album. And I'm definitely not going to post them all at once. I am going to save them one by one to use as content and, and, and to post on my page and to obviously re-engage in these groups. I always save my really favorite picture of my family or something that I know that like so many people would have in common. I save it for a pretty much like a self-esteem post. I hate to put it that way, but like, if I'm feeling like down, I go into my group. Like if I've got nothing going on, if I'm like crickets, this is driving me nuts, crickets. Like, what am I supposed to do with my time right now? I've done my income producing. Nobody's biting. Oh, well, it's time for a new engagement post. So I've done this in multiple groups. So I only friend the ones that have really good conversation is what you're getting. Okay. And I basically what I do, and I don't have my notepad. Of course I don't. 
but I was going to show you, but I'll just tell you instead, is that if you can't keep track of who's what and what, who's where and why, and how do I know you and or do you write, you know, whatever in your notebook, this seems a little bit like a little bit of work, but it all is if you want it to work write down like a page. So for me, I'll have like UTV page, no joke. And let's say Tanya friend requests me or I friend request Tanya. And I want to keep track of who the heck Tanya is. I write Tanya's name down on the UTV list. Okay. And I've done this for the Australian shepherd group. I've done this for the German shepherd group. I write them down on their own pages. Like I might have 50 people on each page written down. And the reason for that is when they chime in on my personal page or my stories, which is what ends up happening is that I know who they are. I mean, like you go to their profile, sometimes it's not as crystal clear as yours as to what you do and how you met, because I know that my profile is clean. I know they're going to go and go, oh yeah, duh, met her through the UTV page. You know what I'm saying? For them, it's not really easy for me. Sometimes I'll go back and be like, how exactly do we know each other? What do we have in common again? You know, I mean, it's like an opener line. Like if you get them in private message, what are you going to say to them? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so anyways, so like, oh yeah. You know, like, have you hit the trails lately? Something as simple as that. So anyways, so I have these pages and I have these, these engagement posts and I go back to the engagement posts every couple of days, no joke. And I respond to more activity. Okay. It's really that simple. And I know you guys are thinking like, oh yeah, okay, well maybe. Okay. Well, no, 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 seriously. I have grown my network so big because of doing this. These people, <laughs> here's the best part. So Okay. So like, you know, what's the best is like, if you join a group like that and there's some type of get together, let's call it. So like for us with the UTV, that's why I always say like, pick a strategic group. So like, if you're joining a, I'm not going to use, I'm going to use lightly, but like a boating group. Okay. Let's just say that Minnesota has some type of boating event. You know, I basically make sure that when I join this group, that there's going to be maybe even some possibility. This is crazy for me, but this was my whole idea with the off-roading one to actually meet these people. Like, what about that? What about actually meeting them? So like this UTV group, like they put up events in there. So if you join a group that's got like events, get, get super specific. Okay, guys, I know this is getting really specific, but this is really giving, this has really worked wonders for me. Follow the events or join the event tab or whatever. I went to a poker run. Okay. It was a Halloween one. And we were looking for not poker run. It was Sasquatch hunt on the UTVs. How fun is that? So people are <laughs> drinking and getting on, well, not the drivers, but getting on their UTVs and they're going off-roading looking for wooden Sasquatches. Okay. So that's right up. I know it's, it's right up my alley, but, <laughs> but I was like, this is cool. Okay. We're going to do this. So we were going to be up there anyways at our cabin. So I said to my husband, it was a nighttime event. We don't typically night ride, but we're doing this. So at like five, six o'clock, we get in the car, we go over to this event. Now you remember, I don't really specifically know these people. I've only got about maybe 150 friends from this group. I show up at this event and <laughs> it was the craziest thing ever. Tony Tomzak. I'm like, who is that? I'm like, oh God, this is, this is really happening. These people are here. So thank goodness. The ones that I friended, like I knew nine out of 10, but like, they came up to me, they were talking to me, they, they saw the, of course I had my patch on, like I was prepared and I had minis in my backpack. And, um, honestly that day I walked away, I didn't get any signups that day. That wasn't my goal. People weren't there for that. They were there to, you know, to, to do the Sasquatch hunt. So, um, got home and like, literally like my, it blew up these people were like, she's a real person. Now it took that for me just because like, I'm not from Wisconsin. They did probably thought I was just joining the group because, you know, I don't know, but it was like, Oh, we know your family. And it was so cool because I got to connect with them. And then they've been a gateway to new people for me. So maybe they don't need the product, but they know somebody. So I can't even begin to tell you how many signups came from doing that. But I can tell you that I ran out of a cold market or a warm market. And I decided to, and I think that's what this is, is considered like my cold market. Like the people that I haven't met yet, the people that, you know, I would have no, I wouldn't be friends with all these people if it wasn't for joining that group and doing that. So of course, when we got, you know, Mojo, our Australian shepherd, I did the same thing. 
Okay. And I, the same thing with the German shepherd group. And I go back every couple of weeks and I only do one and I don't do them all at the same time, because honestly, like I, it's too hard notification wise, even if I turn them off to go back and visit all those comments, the German shepherd post, I'll probably get about 1200 comments because it is a bigger group in about half an hour. Like, I'm not even kidding. So join a group maybe that you can and make sure when you're putting that post up that engaging post make sure that it's something that is like stands out you know your dog doing something silly whatever it is um but that's something i've been doing and i make sure though that i work that into my content on my page so of course now you could come full circle you know people like what do you post about or i don't know what to post about well you should be posting about a business post I mean, if that's what you're looking to get is some, you know, obviously grow your team and you should be posting about products too. And when I say products, I don't mean the people don't need to see what they can read on the website, what the products have done for you, the way it's changed your life, you know, follow the, you know, the, the basically the tools were given at hand, like follow the whole, like thankful Thursday, flex Friday. These are, this is content you can work with. That's folk very well focused. And that's how I operate really well is with really focused content so when i don't know what to post i go through my i literally just scroll through my own timeline and i say like well how long has it been since I've, i put up a post about you know mojo the german or the australian shepherd and i'll put that up because what i'm doing is now that i've got i've done that in three or four groups with friending people that are liking my stuff i have to keep them captivated they have to want to stay on my profile because if they just see spew, 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 spew of thrive, they're going to leave. They're going to leave. That's not what they were your friend with. Not everybody wants to see that. So like, honestly, like you have to have a happy balance. So it's really helped me tune down constantly posting about thrive. Ah, no offense, but like, it can't be thrive, 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 thrive. Do you, do you not have anything else? I mean, that's how I see it at least. So like, that's great, but like, you need to find something else that's going to get other people engaged. And, and I, and, and I don't typically take like specifically like, um, an engagement post, like an Australian post or a UTB post and put it on my profile. I don't typically do that. I leave that specifically for the groups and I'll just put a cute picture up on my profile because those engagement posts are what is like my tool to growing my network inside of those groups. I don't ever really want somebody to see that in a group and then come to my page and be like, oh, you know, you're, you're, you, you ask that same question in the group. So you don't want to be redundant. You don't want to go into two or three of the same group and do the same question. You know, I thought about that, like, hmm, maybe I should join two or three groups. Okay. How many people are in common in those groups? They're going to totally pick up on you're doing something. So you have to be really strategic because you don't want to get the boot in these groups. So you have to be slow and steady with responding to people in a sense, like you don't want to overstep your boundaries. Um, now, of course, I send friend requests that people don't answer. What are you going to do? Okay. They're, they're not, if they don't accept you after three or four days, they're probably not going to. And I go back and I delete that request. Okay. So don't overthink it. You know, me and them might have great chemistry, you know, but they don't want to be friends with me. Um, I've only had one person message me and ask me like, why are you friend requesting me? And I just said, oh my gosh, I just felt like we got along so good. And like, you're, oh well, yeah, I know, but I don't accept. Okay. That's totally fine. If something changes, just let me know. Maybe she went to my profile. Maybe she saw about thrive. That's why I say, make sure you're strategically posting on your page, because if you get these people in your, in your timeline and all they see is thrive, 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 thrive and your post and you're in a fishing group. Well, this seems kind of fishy. So that's what I do. Um, it's honestly helped me streamline what to post about and how to keep people engaged. So of course, like I said, though, you have to remember though, you have to make sure you have content for your profile to continue to do that. So, you know, like I said, if you don't go to my profile and you scroll or you want an idea, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I post about the Sherman Shepherd and the Australian Shepherd, not because I necessarily want to, <laughs> but because I'm part of a walking shit show, excuse my French, at my house with the dogs and the child, and they create all kinds of awesome content for me right in front of my eyes every single day. Like it's unplanned. That's the best. So if like, you know, 
just use something very close. Like you don't have to go out and buy something to make this happen. Um, you know, do something that is part of your daily routine that you're already doing that groups exist for. There are groups for everything. I don't know if you guys saw the commercial on the TV recently, but like Facebook has a group for everything. It was like some weird hobby. So figure out what it is that makes you tick way beyond, you know, like I said, way beyond, you know, if it's cooking, whatever, but make sure you're sharing that stuff. Make sure you're putting it in your stories as well. Because Some people are story people. Some people are timeline people. Okay. I have people in my stories that have never reached out to me on my timeline. Oh, make sure you always have two places going, you know, stories are really effective for me, but I don't know if that helps you guys, but that's something I did to expand my network. Um, because again, like I've been doing this for two and a half years. And for the first year, year and a half, I had plenty of new blood in a sense for, for this, but honestly, I started getting kind of like stagnant and I started getting really nervous about, well, how do I do this? I'm, I don't, I'm not one of those people that's going to, you know, you could offer me a hundred bucks. I'm still not going to go and randomly friend a hundred people because I know I'm not going to be able to keep them. We, I, I don't even know what we have in common. Um, and doing another thing too, about these groups is that we don't want to step on other thrivers toes. We know that, right. It's etiquette. Like this is human etiquette. Like you're not really purposely looking to sign somebody else that somebody else is already working with. That's not cool. When you're going through like suggestions, that's the last place I look. Because usually they're suggested because you have somebody in common. And if you actually take a moment to go to their profile and like see who's in common, if they share their friend list, chances are you're probably going to see that somebody knows in common with them. You know where that's going to go. So I don't like doing that because that seems to be what happens there. So when I'm doing this in this very specific group, I'm not friending anybody that anybody else is friends with. So these people are specifically people that I've brought into my market and there's no toes stepped on. So that is something I would suggest to do if you're like running into what do I do? Nobody's responding. I don't have any potentials. Start a new potentials list. You know what I'm saying? And start a fresh page and start over sometimes with something like that. Um, so yeah, but make sure though, when you have these opportunities to take these pictures and get this criteria and this content that you're going to need for your profile to continue posting about these things, make sure you take those opportunities and don't all go posting them all rapid fire all at once in an album. You go on an awesome vacation and this is the group you're in, like, you know, I don't know, some type of vacation group. Don't go posting them all in one post, save them, save them, use them slowly. Um, I still post things from some of the retreats I've been on that I never posted before. You know, when people get the idea like, oh, she's always on vacation or whatever, you know, or, oh, are you guys still up here writing? That's the best. It's like, I take the pictures and like, I'll post and like, are you guys up here writing right now? And no, we're actually 250 miles away at home. When's that picture? Oh, that was from this weekend. I forgot to post. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it keeps them because I don't live where my toy is, my off-roading toy. It's like I said, it's up north and that's still one of my things. So we're going to go up there this weekend. We're going to ride. I'm going to take all kinds of pictures. But in the meantime, I have stuff I've been using from a couple weeks ago. So I don't know if that helps you guys, but that's definitely how I grab them and then keep them. And as far as turning them into customers, well, guys, again, this is all going to come back to they're going to come out of their shell at their own time. Okay, that is not up to you, and I wouldn't push it. Um, what basically has happened is that I'll friend request them, and any anywhere between like, it's been as short as a day, and a lot of people like usually between one and two weeks is that they'll shoot me a message or they'll comment on something like, "Hey, what's this Thrive stuff you've been posting about?" Because I'm slowly leaking it in. I'm not overwhelming them. And, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. That's something I got involved with a couple of years ago, you know, and I was like, it just makes me feel really good. You know, I can bear the long days out on the UTV. I was bringing in full circle. Gosh, these dogs are so draining. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much work. Two puppies under three, kind of like two kids under three. So much work. Thank goodness for my happy patch. Do you know what I'm saying? So like a lot of my customers have done that. So another thing that's happened too, is that like, I found that like, I friend like a bunch of people in a network, you know, and then, you know, like somebody will come into my network and it's like, oh gosh, I'm in the German shepherds too. And I really get specific, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm in this big group. Oh, I see you are too, you know, and, and I won't post in there anymore. Like I'll go to a different one. So, you know, I, like I said, I try to be really courteous of people's feelings. Um, and I try to make sure that I have something to work with 
so I don't sit here and go, well, what am I going to wake up and post about? So I wake up and again, I'm going to, I'm going to end my little spiel here in a second, but I wake up, I post something inspirational in the morning. You can go to my page and pretty much see every single day. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I can't even, but I post something inspirational and then I, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading something, post something inspirational. And then I post something about one of those things. I'm really into working out too, but working out, here's one thing. And then before I, working out is a very fine line. Like you better have a big working out clientele watching you. If you're going to be a thriver, that's desiring muscle, make sure you join a group that has something to do with working out and get some of those people into your network. Because if I put a lot of working out stuff on my posts, like, or my, you know, I only really put up my stories. I don't put a lot. And the reason is, is that people think they have to work out to have success with Thrive. That seems to be a rock and a hard place corner for me because they're like, oh, you got that because you work out. I just want to lose some weight. Yeah, but I did that first. You know what I'm saying? So don't confuse people that like, you know, that they have to work. That's one place that I'm really careful is because I do enjoy working out. And it is one of my things, but I don't post a lot of it on my profile because I don't want people to think that that is how the only way that you can thrive is to be like some, you know, cause that seems to be, if I don't post, they'll message me like, is that something you take just cause you work out? I'm like, no, is that how it comes off? You know, so make sure that what you're, yes. And you have to be very careful because you don't want that because that, that, that's tough. Like I work out a lot. I work out, I've committed to five times a week for uh, since May of last year, at least five times a week. And I've seen miracle change in my body. And that has given me a new market of people that was already in my market though. Like people that were already on my friends list that were into working out that aren't getting the same success. And that's what I kind of use it as now. Like, how do you work that in? Well, I have comparison pictures of pre-thrive, pre-workout, and then thrive and workout. And I can compare them together now though. So it's like, well, this is what I look like when I lost thrive. See how gravity still had an effect here. <laughs> I mean, when I incorporated the workout, see how gravity lifted, you know what I'm saying? So I have an ability to work with what I'm posting um, just by simply, you know, obviously like the working out part by obviously being a little bit more relatable to people, you know? So anywho, be relatable to the people that you're friend requesting, make sure you're putting content on your page of these people that you have brought into your market, or you're going to get dropped real hot, especially if, you know, they're only in it for your group. A lot of these people join these groups and that's all they do on Facebook. Like if I go to their profile, they don't post anything. But if I go into this group, they've got 75 posts going, not because they're fishing for customers or whatever they're, but because that's where they communicate. They aren't one of those people who post on their timelines. So the groups are huge, guys. A lot of people join Facebook specifically for the groups. My husband is kind of sort of one of them. So that's that. Um, anything else I missed that you want me to touch on, Rebecca? Yeah, I just have to say that that was straight fire. Like, if you don't know how to work groups by now after this, <laughs> um, I, I just, like everything that you talked about, like the full circle of being relatable when it comes to this, that was huge to me. I wrote so many notes on that. Um, the only, uh, I think you covered really pretty much everything. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, I know you talked about the conversation as far as getting them into talking about Thrive. How long do you feel like when you get these people into messenger how do you what do you feel like your timeline is of introducing them I know you said sometimes they come to you um, but in an instance if you feel like so say they post something about being tired do you reach out to those people and not at all okay no okay, so I, you're waiting for them I, to come to you as far as the groups go yeah you know it to me they're going to pick up on what I'm, I'm going to use this word lately, what I'm up to if I start doing that. Um, right. Exactly. Yep. I, I don't, I don't ever cold message. And again, you guys might say, well, no, 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 no. I'm not actually, no, 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 be very careful with that because when well, you know what I found, this is the best part. 
in these close knit groups like this, and this is going to come full circle with what you're asking me in these close knit groups that I've joined, this was central Wisconsin off-roading. I mean, this is kind of specific. Okay. These people know each other a heck of a lot more than I do because well, they're all from Wisconsin and <laughs> it's a smaller world up there than it is even here. I'll friend somebody and then I'll friend somebody else. And then on my post, like when I put something funny up about the UTV, they're having a full-blown conversation on it. And I'll just be like, do you two know each other? You, you know what I mean? Like, it's weird to me. It's like, okay, I friend of both of you separately. Yeah, in the same group. Oh yeah, that's my sister-in-law. <laughs> okay. You know, so I don't, because I don't want, let's, I don't want to, I don't want to be spammy Tammy. So exactly. Yeah. Let them come to me. And if I am looking for, you know, like those posts that we put up, give them an opportunity to just comment on your posts. Do I'm really, I struggle really hard time with like the whole thrive mini experience post, because the problem is, is that I haven't quite found the exact perfect wording <laughs> to give out, to, to be able to, I don't give my minis for free because that's just like, that was something I initially came in. Like, I'm not going to financially upside down myself. Like that's not that that'll dig you a hole. If you ain't doing it right, you'll be giving up your whole $800 kit. Cause everybody loves a free sample. So like, I'll put that up and I give them those opportunities to be like, are you interested now? Granted, a lot of them think that that's for free. Cause of, you know, we don't exactly always say like in our posts for $5 a day. Um, but like they'll comment on that. And I'll be like, yes. And it's like, and I'll be like, Susie such, such and such. And I'll go to my book and I'll go to the page. I'm like, oh, she's in the off-roading group. And I put a little check mark next to her. She started a conversation with me about Thrive today. Awesome. Now she's moved to the potentials because she's liked my post. So I give them an opportunity to explore my profile at their speed, Rebecca. And then they'll find something if they want to that captivates them. Now, another thing that's key, I don't care if you don't like going live, tough, tough, <laughs> huge with a new market is going live and introducing yourself. Huge. Because these people don't know who you are and your posts mean nothing. Like they don't know what, you, like, who are you? What are you about? What kind of vibe do you put off? Do I like you? Could I continue to listen to you? Go live. So I haven't went live in a few days, I've been super busy over here. So I'm guilty, but go live every couple of days at minimal be, and, and talk about what either the product has done for you or the business, flip it, you know, let them get that first entry video. Like you would do back when you first started thriving, like go back to the things that you did initially that worked for all of us. We first came in and things were like drop it like it's hot, like there was so much going on. Redo that. Okay. Like re -V I'm gonna use the word like like re VIP yourself, but redo all the things you were doing to re VIP or, or to VIP yourself. Do those things. Go live. Talk about your three steps and what they've done for you. You know, like I find that like I put my three steps in my stories. I never really put a post about three steps because I feel like that is for me super like questionable. I don't get a lot of people just going at it like that. I do it a different way. Like I put a little in my stories, like it's fun. I make it fun. And then right. I'll put up a post. Like, does anybody want to gain more, you know, whatever, whatever. And you know, whatever, you know, like, however I want to work that day. Like I switch between things. Anybody need mood support and energy, you know, anybody need appetite control, whatever that gives them an opportunity to chime in. If that, if they, if something that they see resides with them, so I would never go out of my way to friend or to, to, to send a message though, because again, you don't know them that well. And if I was that person and I was on the other side of that screen and even doing what I do and knowing what I know, I would still be turned off. 
I don't know if that's helpful, but no, I think I think that's amazing because I feel like honestly, when it comes to these groups, people rush it and they feel like, okay, I gotta find this customer, I gotta find, you know, they turn it into being a number when it comes to these groups. And that's why I asked that question because I feel like a lot of people are looking for that when they come to these groups. But the the purpose of these groups is building those relationships to where you can open up to have conversation, like you said, to where you're in that group, whether it's a dog group or ATV group, and you're able to have that conversation about the three steps and throw in, like you said, which is so important. Oh, I, you know, I went off-roading and I'm so thankful for this energy and this is why I do this. Um, that That is the importance of these groups, you guys, is being relatable and making that full circle. I love that you explain that to a T, Tony, because a lot of people come into these groups and they feel like, oh, I got to find this customer. I got to find this promoter. I got to find the perfect person to bring into my business. Um, but when you take that extra step and you really, really make that full circle, that's when it truly makes a difference in your business when you're working these groups. So I, I love, love, love your answer. And that's why I asked you that because so many people come to me when it comes to these groups and they're like, how do I make this person my customer? And that's not the question that you need to be asking. The question you need to be asking is, how can I relate to this person so that I can change their life when it comes to these products? So love, love, yeah. love your answer. You know, it's honestly too, and this is the last tidbit I got for you is like, I have a group for my boutique and we'll just leave that there. Like this isn't a marketing for that type thing here, but I have a group for that. And there's 3000 people in there. And a lot of people like think or whatever, like I utilize that for that. No, those people are in there for the boutique. Like they're not in there for the thrive. So it's very sporadic and random that I'll put something there. Like maybe a, once every six or eight weeks, I'll post in my actual, my own group for thrive because that's not why they're in there. They don't want to see all that. Like I have that right. In, yeah. They're, I'd rather I've learned to just like friend request them and let them see it on my profile. Like they're in that group. So don't ever go into those groups and post about Thrive. Don't ever even, don't even comment back to anybody about Thrive in those groups. That's how I feel. You know, like if somebody, oh, so cute. You guys are so cute. You know, I want to be like, yeah, we have all this energy and thanks to Thrive. And I want everybody to see it but it's just not the time or the place for that. Like you bring it to your profile. So make sure you shift that. that that's the point I'm getting at. Like in my own boutique, like, no, that's not happening there. That's not why they're there. I don't want to lose them for the real reason they're there. So right at Rebecca, like it's time and place and be patient. Absolutely. I mean, that's what these groups are for you guys. And uh, that's why I picked this topic because I feel like a lot of us are coming into the season of building. Um, we're coming into the season of where we're building up for the fall. And if you guys are just now joining um, this business, <laughs> fall season is huge. Um, it, it's popping. So if you're not building your network um, during the summer, it's something that I personally, personally recommend to 100% do. And this is a way to do it. Um, I want to hop in here and say, uh, Brittany told me to say, who has not won something on the morning Zoom here? I'm going to choose a winner. Um, but I appreciate you, Tony, and really, really uh, expanding on how to really work these groups. Because like I said, this is so, so important for building your network. And I know a lot of people struggle with this because they're just like, how do I find these people that are going to be perfect for my business? Or how do I find these people that I'm going to be relatable to? And this is it. Uh, make that full circle. You guys do the extra work. And I promise you, it's going to just help you grow in so many ways. Um, when I found groups the first time, it blew my mind uh, how many people you truly can connect with. And like Tony said, it's not just connecting. You know, we have Facebook to connect through the internet, but when you take that extra step to really connect in person and finding those events through those pages, um, it does big, big things. So, you know, I've done different things like meeting up with Conroe area moms and being able to have that conversation is awesome. And another thing you guys can use is there is a app called Meetup. And you can download that and it has different ways of, you know, connecting with others in your actual town. 
So I'm gonna pick a winner winner here, not a winner. <laughs> while you while you pick a winner, who's reading Brave today? It's me. Will you go ahead and read it? Yep. We are on day 90, your home. My friends, you were chosen to be free. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do anything you want. Use it as an opportunity to serve each other with love. Galatians 5.13. The longer I live, the more I'm figuring out that courage often looks like sacrifice and service. In the places where you find the most comfort, you have to have a little extra something to give there. Home is where we rest. Home is where we find peace. So to give from there to sacrifice in that place is to sacrifice deeply. I think it's brave. I didn't have a place to live when I moved back to Nashville from Scotland. All my belongings were in storage units somewhere in West Nashville. Excuse me. Can you be quiet for a minute? Um, and I no longer had an address. It was Thanksgiving and I planned to find something around Christmas. Before leaving Nashville the previous summer, I had joked with my friends Luke and Heather about moving in with them when I got back. Sometime in the fall, Luke Skyped me and said the joke was an actual offer. I was welcome to stay with them for a couple weeks while I tried to find a place. I interrupted their lives. I added an entire human to their two human household, and I needed a key and a bed and a bathroom and the internet. Coming home after being overseas for six months, I was worried about reverse culture shock. It's a real thing. Being surrounded by foreign culture, attempting to make it your own, and then coming back home, it can cause a normally sane person uh, to lose it a little bit. And I'm normally sane. So you've got to factor that in too. But living with Luke and Heather was the most comfortable, warmest, friendliest environment. We decorated the Christmas tree, dressed in sweats to the movies, and walked to dinner at Eadley's, the new barbecue restaurant in the neighborhood. In fact, another friend, Adam, came to live with us too. So we became a little family of four for that holiday season. I think Luke and Heather's sacrifice rescued me from the pain of readjusting to Nashville and America. I truly do. New Year's, Day, New Year's Day came and I still hadn't found a place to live. Weeks had accidentally turned into months and it wasn't until mid-February that I was packing my things and moving to a new house just down the street. But they never complained. We talked about it openly and honestly multiple times, but they just kept giving. Their space, their time, their money, and their hearts. It's brave to let a person live in your house who isn't family. How can you be brave in your home with the people you live with? Will you invite someone to stay with you for a while? Are you brave enough to be kind to your spouse? Can you unload the dishwasher first? Can you always take the trash out even if someone else should be doing it? And what does it look like to serve and be brave in your own home? Are you brave enough to find your place, even if your place is right there, even if your place is in your home? Today's task, be brave. Thank God for your home, for the place you live, and ask him how you can be brave in your house. So good. Rebecca, who's the winner? I have Jen Hansen on my side. All right, message me and I will get it mailed out. All right, y'all. It's Wednesday. It's Wellness Wednesday. It's halfway through the week. Is it the last day of the month? January, February, March, April, May, June. It is. Last mm. day. It's June, right? Yeah. Last day of the month. Kick ass. We'll see you guys back here on Friday. Have a wonderful day. Bye.